G'day guys, welcome back. I went and had my coffee. <laughs> I scraped the canvas, I'm sorry to say. Yes, I scraped the canvas. Uh, yeah, if I'm not really happy with it, there's no point in me keeping a canvas. I'd rather scrape it and try it again. Now, it was my first experiment with the Montmartre paint. Uh, so yeah, gonna go again. If you missed that previous video, just watch it. It's just before this one. Um, and that was a little bit thicker than mix. This one, I've still used my, <laughs> it's empty now, 65% glue, 35% water. But instead of going one to one, I have gone one and a half parts pouring medium to one part paint. Now in saying that, they are a little bit different. You guys know that each color is a little bit different. Um, so the white added a little bit more paint. The turquoise was probably more one to one. The others were one and a half to one. So yeah, that's it. Just play around with it. You know, pick one brand of paint and experiment with it. That's probably the best way for you to get your consistency right. And write down everything you do each time so you know what works, what doesn't. Uh, spot on. Treadmill, silicone. I prefer that. It's quite thin. So it makes nice round cells. Um, some of the others are quite thick, like the um, dimethicone or the hair serum, the coconut milk hair serum. They're really quite thick. And um, I find that they make the cells really too wobbly and wonky looking. So this is my favorite to use. I buy it from somewhere in the States through eBay. It is quite expensive. It costs me about $60 or something for a bottle with shipping. But, you know, a bottle's gonna last you a year. So spend a little bit more and get what works, hey? If this is your hobby <laughs> and you love it, you may just have to spend the money, hey, and get what works. That's what I think anyway. You need to have good quality paints. You need to have good quality materials to get a, a good finish. You now, while you're practicing, you can start with your craft paints and things like that, but you're really not going to get a good result. And people say, why didn't I get nice cells? What happened? And, you know, you just got to... Upgrade to the better quality paints and then you'll probably get a better result. Now, um, what can I show you the consistency on this one? This tiny little mound. You still need to have a mound. If it's kind of more like a, if I can show you, more like a just a straight down like that, like a pyramid, when it hits the surface, then it's too thin. It needs to leave just a little mound. Oops, I touched the white <laughs> on something. Okay, little mound. See that? One, two, three. One, two, three. It's still sitting there for three seconds, so little mound. Not as big as last time. And um, we'll see if it works this time, hey? Because I like these colors. Got the same order I think I've got the same order I didn't play back the video but I think it's the same order all right wish me luck let's go again hopefully they are a bit thinner really not much difference a little bit thinner I guess because I added water last time I didn't add water this time I just reduced the amount of paint so hopefully they are going to be thin enough We'll do two layers again. Try and layer quickly. You can fast forward if you don't want to watch me layering. <laughs> layer up on layer. My layers aren't very big because I've got five cups to go through. So if I had only three cups, I could do like a proper layer. Whereas you don't, where you don't see any colours underneath, but I don't have that much paint, so you can still see the colour beneath. But I wanted to do the flip and drag, you know, the stripies, so 
just making the best of what I've got. But yeah, three cups, three bigger cups, I guess, would have also worked. But um, I wouldn't do the flip and drag then. I would just do the flip cups. But I wanted to go with the stripies just to see what this paint can do. Not sure about this sap cream green but it it turned out quite nice in the pour didn't it so that was the first layer here we go on the second one if you touch your cups together like this you can actually run your your cup straight over the top without making too much of a mess okay one down six to go so I basically started with 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint with this one. So a little bit less paint. Uh, last time I had about 850 grams and it, as I said in that other previous video, it was just a bit too much paint. You need to leave enough space on your canvas to actually stretch the paint out. Otherwise it kind of squishes like this your your drags they kind of squish you want to be able to stretch them out enough so that they can open up otherwise you have these thin little sections in the middle and wide sections on the outside because they've stretched over the edges but your middle hasn't been able to stretch so that's always a problem if you've got too much paint so if that's what's happening to you that's because you've got too much paint and you can't stretch that middle paint out so hopefully I've got a little bit less paint today for this pour I haven't shown you my colors my gosh I know I showed you in the last video but I do like to show them in each video because maybe people haven't watched my previous video I'll show you in a minute. Once I flip the cups over, I'll show you what colours I've got. They're all the Montmartre Studio acrylics. Just trying them out. I'm not getting anything from it. <laughs> I just thought I'll try a different brand. I've tried, you know, I've tried lots of different paints tried Chroma, I've tried the Mark, Mark Dimension, um, Chroma Krill, Global, Liquitex, Basics, um, what else? I think there's a couple of others as well, A, A2 or something, I can't remember what they're all called, but um, yeah, I haven't, apart from the Global, I, I do like the Global, um, it was just the issue with the white splitting that um drove me crazy as you guys know if you've been following me or no i've <laughs> been giving me grief i don't know why it's doing that but i've been using the montmart this montmart studio acrylic with the global instead of the global white and it's been fine i haven't had any more split paint so um until they get their act together and fix their white i won't be using it I've been using Global Paints for you know, over two years and it never used to happen until recently. So they've done something to their white paint and I wish they would just undo it. Put it back the way it was, please, Global. I don't know why you have to change things, hey? If something works, just leave it alone. Who knows? Maybe they were trying to cut down on costs and did something differently, different pigment or something that was cheaper. And I think it's backfired because people have a lot of people have moved away from global since the issues were happening. So hopefully they'll fix it and then we can all go back to them, hey? Now I just like to smooth these over. Don't like to leave the big blobs there. 
wipe your fingers. All right, so my colours are the white. And oh, I've got these big two litre bottles. Um, the white and the phthalo blue, I made that uh, light blue out of. Then I had the plain phthalo blue on its own. And then I had the phthalo blue with a dash of black to make a navy. And then I had the sap green on its own and I had the turquoise on its own. So I only bought five colours, black, white, turquoise, green and blue. And then I've been able to make a couple of other colours out of that, making the blue darker, making the blue lighter. It's given me an extra two colours or two shades, I should say. So that's good. Well, these little cells are looking bigger already. When I smushed them in the previous video, they were teensy wincy little ones. All right, are you ready? Let's do this. Oh, what? You weren't there in the previous one. No, you weren't. Oh, stripies. No white in that one. You got white in that one. I'm going to turn these around and do the other way just for fun. Just to see. Oops, we're stuck. Stuck, stuck on the the giant fiddle pads, uh, the giant, <laughs> the giant push pins on the fiddle pads were stuck. That's my cloth, my messy pourer. Okay, let's see what this does now. More glue. So it's already, I can see that this mix is much thinner than the previous one was. Now the paint's flowing into each other more than the other one was. I've got cells straight away. Just pop a little bit of paint on the corners. Like so. I don't think the colours are as vibrant this time around, you know, they've got less paint in proportion to the pouring medium, but still really, really pretty and vibrant. Now, I'm going to cover this bigger section first, so let's zigzag up and down and zigzag to um, cover that area, and I also want to cover down here on the side as well. So that's covered. Now I'll go back down here, cover this side. I don't know why I've got that. My cup mustn't have been close enough to the side because I usually don't have such a big gap there. See the paint's moving a lot, oh, a lot faster this time. Maybe I've overdone it and gone opposite way. Too thin, maybe. Just going to swirl it around there and get it done. <laughs> you can see how much more flowy it is, is can't you? Flowy. All right, let's torch. Nice and high up. Now the mix is thinner this time, so I shouldn't get any caterpillars this time, like I did last time. Cross fingers. It's my, th my theory only, if your mix is too thick, you get caterpillars, so... Or if you get too close with your torch. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. We'll see what happens. Whoa, I've got a bit close there on the side. I've <laughs> got too close there. I'll have to tip that off. So because the mix is much thinner this time round, my cells are... So the paint's more reactive, so cells are popping up a lot faster. too close there as well. Um, let's, we might, we, oh, oh, look at that, way too close. I was just about to pull away with the torch and then I got too close. I'm going to have to tip that off now. You've got to be so careful. Concentrate. Don't lose your concentration because, you know, it can be too late. And then look at that massive cluster now that's come up. 
comes up and then grows. All right, I'll leave it there for now because the weight of my paint's there in the middle. So I'm going to go that way first. Right. So I just walk it back and forth. I do want to get a bit of this off because it's a bit too busy. And I need to go over here as well. So go off to that side. And back. I'm obviously not going to keep my stripes this time, so that's okay. It's just going to be a little bit more flowy. Some people like flowy, don't they? You can see how <laughs> it's really flowing. Oh my gosh. Looks as if I've gone the opposite way now with my, my cells. Or my, my mix being a little bit too thin. First it's too thick, then it's too thin. Let's just get that over. Okay, it's a bit, a bit stretched. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was fast, hey? Okay, so cells are much better. A little bit stretched over down the bottom there, but there's not much I can do about that. And this big colony here, see how they're all stuck together? I don't think I did a very good job of tilting that time. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that because um, if I try and get the paint back this way, these are all gonna stretch out. See how the ones on the edge there have started to stretch out? So I just I just need to leave that now. But it is really pretty and no caterpillars. So there you go, there's my theory proved. Well, I think so anyway, in my little pea brain of a mind. No caterpillars. Uh, the colors have blended more, maybe a little bit more muddy-ish, you know, not as bright as the previous one because the colors were thicker. In the previous one, they didn't blend so much. Now, I think that I've gone the opposite way here and my mix was too thin. So like Goldilocks, First one's too thick, second one's too thin. I need to do another one, which is going to be just right. Hopefully you can see the difference. I can't show the other one because, you know, it's it's scraped. It's gone, skis. But, um, yeah, I mean, the cells are pretty. I've got rings around them. I don't have, you know how last time I had those black bullets because the, um, the paint was too thick. So it was just like a little black bob, blob. I don't have them anymore. The black cells that are up here have actually got rings around them. If you look really carefully, you can't see from up there, but I can see that they've actually got rings around them. So it's worked better this time around. So I just need to just, what's the word? Change the formula just a touch. Um, and then I think it will be fine. You saw how my mix was just like, you know, it was just like sloshing around when I was tilting. So a little bit too, too thin. I just went slightly the opposite way. I was being over cautious because I didn't want it to be too thick again. Oh, look, I've missed a bit just there. Um, what can I put there? I need some green. There we go. Pop that there. And I also need some that colour, just there. Work underneath, run my little tool all the way underneath, catch the drips. I do love these blues and greens. They are just divine, aren't they? So pretty. I cover that? I don't even know. Put some blue on it. Why not? Okay. Um, take it down for a close-up. I think a lot of people will, will like this one because they like the bigger cells. Me personally, I don't like how they've started stretching. So they've lost their round shape. They're, they're not really round. Most of them they're um, oblong or they're kind of bumping into each other. Uh, I prefer 
space around them. And here, where I've over-torched, they're just like um, lizard skin. <laughs> They've all bumped into each other. So that was me being, I just torched way too close. That's my own stupid fold. I'll stand here and see if I can go straight up. So I've got some nice blending of colours. I'm not really sure what to do next actually because I've done one to one and then I did one and a half to one. Hmm. There's a nice round one just there. But the others because my mix was so well, not so thin, but thinner than I would normally use. Um, the cells all swished, swished around, and there's that big cluster there where I got too close with the torch. So they all grew. Oops. They all grew. That's better. And if you look really carefully, you can see how there's a little caterpillar in there. And that was, as I said earlier, if your mix is too thick or you torch too close, you're going to get a caterpillar. Look at there, little cells all joined together. But nowhere else have I have I got the caterpillars like I did in the, the previous pour. Because, you guessed it, I thinned my mix down. So that's why I'm going to focus, please. Thank you. So, um, I probably preferred the previous one better. <laughs> Too late now, it's gone. Um, only because the vibrancy of the colours. Um, I think it was probably better. See the green? The green has kind of blended and it's lost its vibrancy. It's going more of like a yellowy kind of a colour with the turquoise. So that's one issue, but um, hey, it's still, still really pretty. All right, so um, I don't know that I'll do another one today. I'm, I think I've had enough. I've done three videos today and my camera is about to go flat. I think I really like this side here. This is my favorite side. Yeah, it's really pretty, hey. All right, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll have to have a little think about what I want to do with these, with my consistency. Um, somewhere in between the last two, um, I think will be will be good. So I'm going to sit down and get a piece of paper and a pen and see if I can recalculate. Um, and I will sure go again. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.